Boom, baby. Oh, I moved the keyboard. Good thing I have the, I just bought a new guitar. I have not used that since that video. Welcome back to Greasy White Boy Yells at His Desk. Joke's on you, moron. Today, I'm putting on a hat. Keyboard and guitar. So today we're going a little bit off the beaten path and talking about something new. You might have guessed it, Mr. Bean. For those of you that don't know who Mr. Bean is, if that's even possible at this point, Mr. Bean is a character that was co-created by Richard Curtis and Rowan Atkinson, who is the one that actually plays Mr. Bean. Now, Mr. Bean is perhaps one of my favorite television programs ever. We had a bunch of old dusty VHS tapes when I was growing up of Mr. Bean, and my dad and I used to watch every single one of them dozens of times. The character of Mr. Bean is a very uh, resourceful but also silly and, and dumb uh, English man who goes around and interacts with his environment in very creative ways. Rowan Atkinson, Mr. Bean himself, describes Mr. Bean as sort of a 10 year old anarchistic little kid that just wants to get his way and doesn't care about anybody else and gee dang it, it's the best! The show is so funny and the comedy is so timeless and one of the best things about Mr. Bean is because there is so little little language utilized in the program, the show's been adapted to like 240 different territories. Pretty much anybody in the world, any age, any race, anyone can enjoy Mr. Bean. It's just the best. Now me being such an enormous fan of Mr. Bean, I actually went onto YouTube a couple weeks ago and started looking at some of the old clips from the TV show. And when I found the Mr. Bean YouTube channel, I was floored. First of all, for a TV program that only ran for 15 episodes over 25 years ago, the Mr. Bean channel has over 17 million subscribers. And that's just on the main channel. There are many, many Mr. Bean YouTube channels that have been fully adapted to other languages. There's another channel called Classic Bean or something. It's still got a few million subscribers. It's the same stuff. I should mention that besides the 15 episodes of the real live action Mr. Bean that occurred in the early 90s, there was a later TV show that was co-created by Rowan Atkinson bearing the same name and it was all animated. Made it. That series actually ran for about 130 episodes and it was met with, yeah, it's okay. It's okay. I'm going to tell you right now, I don't like the show. It's very different. I'm not a huge fan of the animation style for it. Throw a little video on the screen there. Girl, have you ever seen thicker lines in a cartoon? Uh-uh. It's just not for me, but people liked it. On YouTube alone, Mr. Bean has racked up billions and billions of views. And I was actually pretty pleasantly surprised to see that the channel posts all the time. But then I started thinking, hmm, how could a channel keep posting all the time if there's only 15 episodes of a live action show. I started noticing some kind of weird stuff. First of all, like I mentioned before, the show only ran for 15 episodes, collectively just a few hours worth of material, but the channel seems to post pretty much every day. Now I started picking through some of these uploads and I noticed that whoever's posting the videos is just taking the same episodes, the same 15, and either fully re-uploading the episode and just titling it and thumbnailing it something different, or they will take an episode, cut it up into pieces, rearrange different parts of the episode, and just give it a brand new title. So right now on the official Mr. Bean YouTube channel, there are dozens and dozens of iterations of just the same recycled regurgitated content, and it is just raking in millions and millions of views. Now I saw that and I was like, oh, okay, well that's not the the worst thing in the world. It is kind of weird though. It seems like you're really wringing this cloth dry, but what else is on the channel? Now about this point in time, I think it's important that I mention to you kind of the person that Rowan Atkinson appears to be. <clears throat> now Rowan Atkinson is an extraordinarily successful performer. Besides the absolute juggernaut that is Mr. Bean, Rowan Atkinson has seen great success in many other projects over the years. He's helmed popular UK series such as Not the Nine O'Clock News and Black Adder and The Thin Blue Line. Line, and he also has a very successful film franchise called the Johnny English series, kind of a, a get smart James Bond kind of parody situation. They're funny movies. Now, Rowan Atkinson do be making us laugh, but the guy has been laughing his ass all the way to the bank, sporting an over $130 million public net worth. That is stupid money and good for him. I mean, he's one of the funniest people ever. He's worked his ass off. Gee dang it, the man should be allowed to have a little bit of 
that chump change, you know what I'm saying? Now, besides being an extremely successful performer, Rowan has also spoken at length about the legacy that he chooses to live and what he wants to do with Mr. Bean for the rest of his life. I doubt that he will reappear, but, um... But, but you never know. Whatever he chooses to do, honestly, is fine with me, because pretty much every iteration of Mr. Bean that I've seen, I've absolutely loved. If you guys are fans of the original television series, I cannot recommend enough the 2007 film Mr. Bean's Holiday. I feel like it does not get enough praise and attention. I think it's an absolute banger, and it's this kind of beautiful semi swang song send-off to Mr. Bean. It's really great. Now, if Rowan wants to be doing the Mr. Bean character till he's 99 years old, I say more power to him, gee dang it. And though Though Rowan has kind of gone back and forth about the future of the character, one thing remains clear. Rowan is extremely protective of his precious baby. I mean, Mr. Bean is his, his legacy for the most part. Now, I appreciate the patience. You might be thinking, okay, Gus, this seems like a heck of a lot of setup. Why are we talking about this? I feel as though it's extremely important that before I tell you what's happening on the Mr. Bean channel, that we take into account the three pillars that I just laid out, all right? Pillar one, <laughs> Rowan Atkinson is a man of integrity and he's very particular and protective of the legacy that he and Mr. Bean will leave. Pillar 2. <laughs> Rowan Atkinson has had tons of success doing a lot of stuff that isn't even Mr. Bean. Pil uh, pillar three. Rowan Atkinson has stupid unlimited money pretty much. Uh. Now keeping these in mind, let's take a look at some of the other content that is going up on these official Mr. Bean channels. I noticed that besides just these recycled rearranged clips from the 15 live action episodes, and besides little snippets from the animated series, that there were some new series that were up on the channel. One of these series is called Handy Bean. Here we go. Rubbish. Aha, this will do it. Excellent. Uh, okay, that's enough. As you can probably already tell, holy nuts, that is bad quality. The entirety of the Handy Bean series is this children YouTube garbage. Every episode starts with some sort of just bland, generic, copy and pasteable green screen footage of the real Rowan Atkinson. That's actually him. The real Mr. Bean just standing in front of a green screen saying something that could really apply to any situation. Something like, here we go, or let's go in there. Are you ready? Look! And today... And if you look at all of these new videos, that's all they are. And after that intro from Green Screen Rowan, the entire rest of the video cuts to this top-down view camera of just hands. They're not even Mr. Bean's hands. It's clearly a much younger man wearing the Mr. Bean coat. But the even weirder thing too is that even though those clearly aren't Rowan Atkinson's hands, Rowan is doing a unique voiceover for every episode. He's narrating little things that are happening on screen while this mystery person just carries out this absolute garbage. I mean, it's nothing you guys haven't seen before. It's that brain dead, watered down children with an iPad YouTube crap, except Mr. Bean is slapped onto it. It really seems like with all these episodes and a lot of the new content they're putting on the channel that whoever's running this operation clearly just had Rowan Atkinson come into the studio for like an hour and get in front of a green screen and just rattle off dozens and dozens of little phrases and little Mr. bean or whatever so that they could just take this footage and just sprinkle these little random Mr. Bean clips into this crappy children's YouTube stuff to give off the illusion of like, oh no, he's involved, he's doing this stuff. I'm sure you're aware of the children's YouTube stuff. In fact, Eddie Burback, my boy, the other boy, Eddie made an excellent video about advertising to children and, and just the state of children's entertainment today. I would definitely go check it out, please. It's a link in the description. Go subscribe and support you, boy. It's, um, wah. Speaking of advertising to kids, God knows that's happening on the channel. Here's like a a straight minute to a handy bean episode where they just try to cram a wix.com sponsorship down your throat oh i've got an idea hey this is editing gus yelling into a stupid fucking macbook laptop microphone because this video keeps getting copyrighted claimed by some dipshit who's abusing the copyright system there's background music at this part but it's pretty much just rowan atkinson going let's put that there 
You get the picture. Look how stupid this is. Sorry you didn't get to experience it in its true form, but there's like two minutes of this shit in the video. Okay, you've seen enough. This is really bad. What? What the heck is that? That's so stupid. In this like eight minute video, there are three different ad breaks. Also, how's a kid gonna make a website? Kids are stupid. They don't know anything. I could kill any kid. Now that I've been checking out the Mr. Bean YouTube channel for weeks, I see community tab posts pretty much every single week announcing like, hey, there's a new Mr. Bean music video coming on Friday. Let's take a look at the music videos on the Mr. Bean channel. Okay, I shouldn't have to tell you this. That was bad. So all of the music videos are pretty much the same as the Handy Bean series. It's some crappy royalty-free music that's set to just recycled animations of the old Mr. Bean TV show. And then every few measures, it's like there is another green screen of Rowan Atkinson, and he's saying the same phrases, just like, huh? Da 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 da. That's not. Uh. Whoever is making and organizing this channel is just churning out content. And let me tell you, they are making money hand over fist. And also, who is running this stuff? I looked around on the internet and I was hard pressed to find anybody associated with the operation of this channel. One thing that I did find weird, and I'm not sure if this points to anything, but in the other channels that are listed, you know, you can advertise other channels on your homepage. The number one channel advertised is for a guy called Colin Furs. So Colin is apparently a YouTuber from the UK and he primarily builds uh, just cool little contraptions and gadgets. He's like a cool science channel. It's like if, if William Osmond ran away to England and never called us back and never texted me and then started a channel, that would be this guy, except I like Will because I actually know him. But this guy could be nice too. I don't know. If you go to the Mr. Bean channel right now, the first video that auto plays for you is Mr. Bean accepting his 10 million subscriber button and this YouTuber Colin Furs gives it to him. And I get even more confused. I'm like, are they friends? I noticed that over a year ago, Colin recreated one of the armchair gag gadget things from the animated TV show. So maybe that's how they got in touch, but is this Colin guy running the channel? Are they related? What's going on? Bro, ow, what? Here's another weird thing too. If you go into the comment sections of pretty much every single Mr. Bean video, whether it's like a crappy children's YouTube handy bean episode, or it's like an actual classic full episode of the 1990 whatever the hell TV show, the like ratios are pretty much the same and all of the comments are just these completely unreadable like bot spammy comments. Now again, I hope this doesn't seem like race racist at all, but every comment is this broken English. It, it looks spammy. It could be people that are, you know, non-English speakers. That's fine. But I'm just saying the initial red flags here is like, who is leaving these comments? Most of them are the like, who watching Mr. Bean 2019 point down thing or like, wow, love Bean giving away money to subscribers, stuff like that. And I'm just like, okay, what's going on here? Anyway, this beautiful thing that is Mr. Bean is overrun. I don't know what's going on with the Mr. Bean YouTube channel. What's going on guys help you know I almost didn't want to talk about this subject in a desk video like this because truthfully Rowan Atkinson is one of the people that I respect and admire more than anybody in this entire world I would die to meet him one day but as I look at what has become Mr. Bean to this new wave this new generation of viewers these beautiful classic comedy sketches are just watered down diluted and in a sense kind of ruined by this crappy children's YouTube content that's being just forced down people people's throats. I don't know what's going on. Again, I redirect you to the beginning of the video when I talked about the big three pillars. He has more money than he will ever, ever be able to spend. He doesn't need to be doing Mr. Bean, and he is clearly a man of integrity that puts great importance in preserving the legacy of his character and creation. So why are you doing this? Rowan Atkinson is clearly a lifelong performer, but he's a bit of an older guy. He's 64 years old, and if you ask my opinion, I just, I feel like he doesn't really know what's being created here. And that makes me sad, or at least I'd like to think that he doesn't understand what's going on because he clearly puts a lot of time and energy into his creations. And I feel like if he fully understood and, and knew what was going on on the channel and being created with his name, that he probably just wouldn't do it. So I don't know, guys, what the hell's going on? Rowan, call me, guy. Gus and Eddie podcast.
Top notch, baby. Let's watch an ad. Gus, come out. I don't. I don't want to go out there. Gus. I hate money. Ah, fine. Hey, everybody. This video is sponsored by Audible. Here I am telling you about Audible. Guys, everybody knows it. Audible is the premier place to get access to tons and tons of audiobooks, Audible originals, little mystery documentaries, uh, series. It, the list goes on and on. Right now, if you go to the link in the description down below and you go to audible.com slash Gus, you can get friggin' a deal, okay? Hey, you get a friggin' deal. You get up to three months of Audible for just $6.95 a month. Okay, that's over 53% off. 53, I say. Why don't you use Audible if you're a student driving home for Christmas to visit the family? Why don't you use Audible if you're a construction worker and your on-site boss says it's okay to listen to stuff and you're not gonna cut someone's band hands off with the bands off? Here's one thing that I've been doing lately, okay? I've been going back to some of the back catalog that I had to read when I was growing up in school and nobody likes doing books when you're growing up because they make you read them and it stinks. But I was like, hey, I actually found a bunch of cool stuff, okay? And I'm listening to it now on Audible and it's pretty neat, actually. Who would have thought that one of the neatest things I ever heard was the audiobook for Lord of the Flies? Mmm, Piggy, not spoiling anything, but god dang, check that ish out. So please, treat your ears and your brain this holiday season and into the new year of 2020. That's audible.com slash Gus or, or why don't you friggin' text Gus to 500-500, you get the same deal, alright? Thank you, the Audible family. Bye, I love you.